This is the One Piece Podcast, episode 559 for the week of Sunday, March 3rd, 2019. My name is Zach. And my name is Ed. And on this week's episode, we have very special guest translator for One Piece in Shonen Jump and Manga Plus. We have, don't fret, he's here, Stephen Paul. Don't fret, I am here. And even without the manga, we have uh, stuff to talk about this week. Yeah, this is a this is going to be your most Stephen centric One Piece podcast episode. You're going to get all month long. I almost guarantee it. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Probably. Uh, we also have special guest. He is a animation director for Rick and Morty and uh, Teen Titans Go, amongst others. We have Brian Newton with us. How's it going, Brian? I fret and despair, for I am here to claim your souls. <laughs> nice to have you, Brian. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> always, always great to have Brian here. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about the latest issue, issue five of the One Piece magazine. Stephen, for those who don't know about the magazine, do you want to give like a quick rundown of what that is? Yeah, it's um, it is a fancy uh, magazine. It's like a what is two hundred fifty yeah page uh, magazine that uh, Shueisha is now putting out. Quarterly, they did three uh, in 2017, I think that that's right. Uh, and uh, or maybe it was last year. I yeah, time holds no meaning anymore. But uh, now it is yeah, quarterly. now it is a a quarterly magazine, and um, it just has a a bunch of different stuff in it, um, covering you know interviews with people. Uh, Oda at first, uh, now they've uh, he's kind of taken a back seat for a little while. Um, and they they do interviews with other people involved with the series. Um, you know, they have like little fashion segments and Sanji's recipes and uh, picture books and, uh, you know, essays from people about One Piece and so on and so forth. And you also get some um, uh, some little goodies from uh, Oda, like some design uh, stuff. Uh, last issue, we had uh, his sketches of all of the daughters of uh charlotte linlin and in this uh issue we have all of the sons of charlotte linlin so um there's some new information here and there uh, to go over as well i didn't I'll spot any greg in this uh in this no issue. he's there he's he there is? i, I spotted him yeah, yeah okay. he's toward the end if 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 the picture of him and the in drawing the non-glo- of him the non-glossy yeah. pages yeah yeah it's in the non-glossy pages sorry greg next time glossy pages um yeah, I, I wish we had this, like, when we started this podcast, Ed, imagine having these magazines to go to. I mean, these and are... Yeah, s- require these are assistance such- to understand what's in them. I <laughs> mean, we have Stephen here. Uh, I know, right? But- like, it's great. It is fantastic. It's um, also just an, an amazing resource for uh, fans. It's just this fun, uh, kind of different piece of uh, merchandise. So it's it's mm-hmm. it's a lot of fun. We're going to go through that. Uh, in a moment, we also have a double anime recap, uh, and there's some really big episodes this time, Ed. Yes, that's right. It's 874, The Last Hope, The Sun Pirates Emerge, and 875, A Captivating Flavor, Sanji's Cake of Happiness. Uh, that's a weird yeah, the, title uh, for that episode. 875 if... is uh, striking visually. It's beautiful. Uh, you should check it out. That's the bad yeah. end musical episode, Ed? 875? Yes, it is. Yeah. Yeah, and so that is a bizarre title for for that um, from Toei. Usually, they're a little more on the money. Well, yeah, it's it's more vague than they than usual. Yeah, um, but anyway, enjoy those anime recaps. We also have some piece together before we get started. First off, if you have not, please download the apps for either Shonen Jump or Manga Plus. Um, if you are in any country in the world, I believe. Uh, Manga Plus uh, is available for you. It has free chapters of One Piece. It is legal. It comes out simultaneously with One Piece's release. Uh, Usually that's going to be on Sundays uh, at around 3 p.m. Eastern time. I think it's 5 a.m. Japan time. Um, Right. Yeah. That's available in both English and Spanish. Whether you're in the United States, around the world, wherever, it's available in both. I believe it also includes the first three chapters and you have options to get the rest of the chapters. I think I, I think that kind of summarizes manga plus, uh, Mm -hmm. Shonen jump. You could get a subscription. I think it's two 99, two bucks a month, two bucks a month, one 99, um, for the entire 
you know, Shonen Jump catalog, back catalog. So you get all of One Piece, you get all of My Hero Academia, please stop me if I name a series that's not included, Bleach, Naruto, uh, Naruto's son, Boruto, um, or Boruto's dad, Naruto. It really depends on what you like. Um, and it's all available. Check that out, shonenjump.viz.com. Uh, and last but certainly not least, uh, please check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash One Piece Podcast. We have our entire OPP Japan documentary on now. And if you, for, that's for all patrons, a dollar and up. Um, does not matter what tier you're in or if you have any benefits, it's all there. We also have alternate images and titles and all that for every single episode. Uh, we have commentary for OPP Japan. We have uh, exclusives, outtakes, and more all on patreon.com slash one piece podcast with that steven are you ready for your steven centric episode i am i've never been more ready this is our recap of one piece magazine volume five which came out for what month I don't even see I, it here. That was in January. It was a little while ago. Yeah, yeah end of January. And and people are probably wondering, why aren't you covering Volume 92 this month? Um, it's because it literally comes out as of this recording, like it just came out tomorrow. in Japan? Yeah. Or tomorrow <laughs> in Japan? Yeah. Tomorrow, like, same, same day as the new Viva Card Binder. I think it might literally be releasing at this very moment as we speak. So it's going to have to wait until our next manga break, unfortunately. It was kind of ill-timed. Um mm-hmm. Because it would also take a while for us to get it, like probably right. at least three to four days minimum. Um, so why don't we get started with this volume, Stephen? All right. Um, well, like the previous ones, it has the same uh, color, or, or excuse me, the cover uh, design template, I guess, um, where you have this really uh, fancy embossed version of a uh, pencil sketch that Oda did of Luffy. <clears throat> against a, uh, a flat color background. In this case, it's green, and we get uh, a very intense uh, look at uh, Luffy in Gear 4 form with his um, kind of weird reflective uh, fist or shiny fist. Um, Embossed with uh, glitter. Yes, with the glitter. That's uh, that's a great touch. Um, now, correct so, me if I'm uh, wrong. This is Snake Man, right? It doesn't because it doesn't look uh, as bulbous as bouncy. Yeah, back. I guess you're right. Yeah, he's more normal proportioned, um, and uh, and yeah, and you, you, on the inside you can see like the actual sketch itself. Uh, it's kind of interesting because I, I feel like we've probably said this before, but you can tell that he does it on. It's either the paper itself or he puts it on top of a like a canvas surface because there's a lot of like uh, texture underneath the. Um, the uh, pencil, so it sort of you know looks like a like he was doing a, a, a sketching or an itch, etching with the um, uh, you know with the the pencil over the paper sort of thing. Oh. Um, so there's a neat neat texture to the um, to these sketches. Uh, and uh, following that, after the table of contents, we have uh, Oda in lieu of a uh, an actual interview with Oda, which he did for the uh, the original three issues of the magazine. We have his uh, like dream, uh, not collaboration, but you know, his like dream request where, uh, it's basically the same concept as the, uh, the chapter covers in between, uh, the cover stories when he just takes reader requests. And this time he does like a full fancy color, uh, version of it almost, you know, looks like a volume cover. And in this case it is, uh, Ace Sabo and Luffy as Marines, uh, getting worked over by Garp, so um, yeah, the, they're all in in this their image like is brilliant. Yeah, they're they're all dressed in their like uh, you know rank recruits, uh, uh, you know first week uh, of drill camp, and Garp is uh, looming over them, uh, looking evil. He's got two swords and he's got a huge grin on his face, and they're all running for it. And they've got the you know the pipes and everything. They they look like they're well, they're grown, but they look like their childhood selves. Well, Luffy all, is all super together. interesting because not only is he missing his big X scar, but he's mm-hmm. missing the one below his eye. Yeah, his um, face scar. Yeah, which I assume is on purpose because this is the alternate reality where right. Shanks was never there, never convinced him to be a part. Right. 
Um, and, uh, yeah. And then, and then on the other side of the page, we get the, uh, the process, um, where you see all of the, um, the different stages of him, uh, sketching it out and, uh, doing it. I, in this case, I guess it's more of the coloring because it looks like he already did all of the line work, um, from the first step, but, um, yeah, you can see how he, uh, uh, fleshed this stuff out and, um, uh, worked on the the colors. I'm not actually sure. I'm I'm like looking at this, and I don't know if I see any spots where it was clear that he like reversed. So I'm I'm still assuming that this is digitally done, but it I suppose it could have been. They could have just scanned it after each you know set of colors that he did or something like that. Yeah, Alex um, has been, been trying to Alex has been trying to figure that out. I know. Right. Um, it's hard to tell. Mm hmm. Um, so yeah, that's, um, it is a very neat, uh, neat illustration. And, uh, this is followed up by a, uh, an interview with, um, I, I want to say it's not a model. This is like an actress and, um, I think, uh, maybe did she do singing stuff too? Yeah. I believe it says that she is also a, uh, a musician as well. And she is cosplaying as Perona. Um, and, um, I don't know. There's not a, there's not a whole lot else to it. I'm not familiar with this um, this actress, but they um, uh, they go through her why she chose uh, Perona. Um, she looks very cute, doing a lot of uh, you know Perona expressions and uh, some other uh, favorite characters of her that uh, she wishes she could have cosplayed or you know was was thinking about. I'd like to see her um, cosplay Kuma. Well. That'd be great. Like yeah, <laughs> it's. Uh, it's funny. I'm, I'm not sure which of these uh, she is serious about trying to cosplay and which of them are just like characters that she likes. But uh, there's some yeah, I, I, I'll go through them, them quickly because it would be ridiculous mm -hmm. to imagine a Japanese model kind of playing mm -hmm. even cough. Any of the three admirals, Shanks, Kuma, Toshigi, Dr. Kareha, which I think they showed the live action commercial version of, of oh, Dr. Right. Kareha recently. It looked she looks really great. Yeah, it was really funny, too. Uh, and Chopper, which I guess anyone could trust as Chopper. Yeah, I, I mean, I think for girls, they probably just have like the, you know, the the stereotypical like sexy Chopper costume where it's just the hat and a little horns and, and then like the shirt or something. That's that's probably how it would go. Um, so, yeah, that's not a, not a whole lot to that one. Um, this is followed by, uh, an ad for stampede. This was, I think some of the first, um, stuff that was, uh, released the, uh, Oda's uh, design sketches for the straw hats <clears throat> outfits, which we saw recently in color, thanks to the, um, the like TV teaser, uh, and the stuff that they've been putting out, but this was just his original black and white sketches. Cause of course this, you know, this came out, uh, a month or, or so ago. Um, so, uh, yeah, we've all, uh, seen that, that stuff at this point. Um, there's some more cross promotional stuff. There's, a uh, um, a celebratory thing for, uh, treasure cruise, the uh, mobile game, uh, which I believe has passed what, like a hundred million downloads. Um, uh, kind of amazing that it said, like it said, it started in 2014 to think that it's been going on for that long. You know, a lot of games just kind of come and go. Because uh, people don't stick with them, but uh, I think they really hit a good formula there. Because uh, it's still apparently going strong, uh, although I, I stopped playing it pretty quick. Um, I, uh, I do see I do see stuff for that all over social media, so I, I think right, it's still right. doing really well. Yeah, the the people who play it are still um, very into still it. Yeah, yep, no yep. judgment there. Yeah. Uh -huh. And uh, there's another ad for uh, the Tokyo One Piece Tower, which I believe um, Maddie was just uh, present for Sanji's birthday. Sanji's birthday. She was ecstatic. <laughs> yeah. She um, has bought out, I think, all of the Sanji merchandise there. Yeah. She's making I hope the most she, of her time. Yeah, I, hope, I hope she brought <laughs> so, uh, lots of money. Ed, if you went, would it just be all the Zoro merchandise? Wait, when is Zoro's birthday? Because we should get you there for Zoro's Isn't that, birthday. Uh, November? November 11th. Yeah, it's because it's all the ones because Zoro, oh, Zoro May is like I get the, it. 11 the one, dice. Yeah. Well, also the three swords, 11 and 1, right? Um, Or is it November 11th or is it November 1st? 
Oh, I, I don't know. I think uh, I think it's, it's a November 11th because of the. Yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Oh, well, it, that's not as. It's fun. the it's the Zoto May. It's it's like Zoto May is is the word for like rolling ones uh, with the dice. So if you roll two ones with two dice, that's called Zoto May. Oh. Um, so, well, eleven and eleven. Sorry, I got uh, us off track here. <laughs> yeah, no, that's that's fine. Hey, hey, you know, it's background information. Uh, there's also some more World Seeker stuff um, where they get a little bit more into uh, the gameplay systems. I think, you know, it's, it's coming up. It's, uh, gosh, what is it? Yeah, March 14th March is 14th. the release date. So uh, they're really bringing out the um, all the promotional uh, material for I've it now. I've been hearing very and good things about it, so excited. I, I think yeah. it looks really good. I'm, I'm, I really hope that it's uh, at least... Uh, you know, at least passable as a game because it it looks really nice. I think, yeah. um, and they they had uh, in the last magazine, uh, volume four, they had some interviews with uh, like people like you know game directors and like script writers and motion artists and stuff like that. And in this one, they have uh, sort of a roundtable where they have uh, Bati John Batiste Hattori, uh, the former editor, uh, and he is sitting with the um, uh, like the big wigs from uh, Gambardion, which is the company that develops the game, um, and like their producers and overall directors, uh, Bandai uh, folks and such. Um, and so they're they're talking about like the the design, like the, what they wanted to do for the game, that they wanted to make it, you know, one map rather than uh, a bunch of different islands, like all of the uh, unlimited adventure uh, games have been, um, and how the you know the open world design process works and. And uh, well, so on. You see him so, playing with the uh, with the uh, with uh, Rob Lucci, which is pretty cool. Big giant. Yeah. Well, they, is it because Hattori is on Rob Lucci? <laughs> like the, the <laughs> yeah. Oh, it could have been a could have been a nod there. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting. I think it's going to be interesting to see uh, just uh, about this game because I, as far as I can tell, it is still uh, from what they're showing. Luffy is the only playable character. So it's all designed to be played with Luffy. And so uh, I think they've been really working at, like how to get as many characters as possible into the game to interact with and do stuff with. So I'm, I'm really curious to see how how they make that work, how that, you know, they they bring as much of the cast of One Piece as possible, because uh, obviously if you can only play Luffy, that uh, that makes a big difference to, um, you know, all of the fighting games and pirate warriors and such. Forgive my ignorance on the uh, video game scene, but what's the uh, has there been a North American or worldwide uh, release scheduled? It's all it's all um, it's a worldwide release. So okay, that's all that's March fourteenth. Yep. Yeah. Okay, cool. So yeah, I, I'm actually I have mine the Japanese one pre ordered, but uh, I you know I didn't need to get that one. I could have gotten the English one, but you know I can't. I I did because I can. Um, so, uh, yeah, after that, we have, uh, more of the law novel. There's been a, a um, I know a novel expert excerpt, uh, in all of the, uh, magazines. Uh, the first three had, uh, the ACE novel, um, as well as some of the, there was another one that was like little, uh, straw hat stories. Um, and now they're going through, uh, the law one. We also have the guest illustration for this issue, which is by, uh, Tatsuyuki Tanaka, who is um, actually kind of a veteran artist, he um, he does a lot of design work under the pen name Cannabis. Um, and actually, I have I was, uh, I was kind of surprised. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I was surprised when I saw it because I was like, oh wait, I have one of this guy's art books, uh, which I I bought at like Comic Con years ago, uh, called Cannabis Works. Um, and uh, yeah, he's pretty cool, very creative. Um, I believe if I recall correctly, cause there was a little like profile somewhere in this issue that, uh, this is, this would tell you how long this guy's been around. He was an animator for the Akita movie. So, um, you know, years. yeah, wow. going back yeah. to the eighties, the um, uh, real cool. Um, so yeah, you get like a nice, like law looking, uh, bloodied, like he's, he's just been beating up a bunch of guys cause you see their, uh, you know, legs and arms kind of sticking into the side of the the frame, um, and um, yeah. So this uh, this law novel, I'm not sure if it's out already or if they're uh, previewing it, but um, this is uh, certainly going to be uh, sold separately as a book at some point. 
I thought you were going to um, say sold out because that also is probably yeah, yeah. true. Could be. Uh, I don't know. It's one piece. They they print millions of everything. It's law. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it's law. Uh, the next bit is a uh, an interview with some guys. I believe this is like a boy band um, from what is the name of this group? Uh, Shonan uh, Shonan no Kaze. Um, and it's two guys named Shock Eye and Hankun. And um, I like that the segment is called Friendline. Friendline, yeah. I'm not sure what uh, you know, friends, friends of the series or something. It's like the um, Grand Line, but for friends. Yeah, yeah. I like the one guy with the um, uh, with the Adidas sweater and just a <laughs> the black giant... power black power Adidas sweater. <laughs> right, and the and like just the head shawl. Uh, completely wrapped around his head that is um, very illogical <laughs> um you can't see stuff. anything yeah and there's some pictures of them checking out the magazines and vera cards and playing with some figures uh, including the um the luffy adventure uh the the mania designed figure that greg had a part of oh yeah um so nice little shout out in there um, and then we didn't, have, didn't Greg have yes. a part of the Vive cards too? So it's it's like all uh, right. the fruits of his right. labor. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, next we have the Kumamoto Travel Diaries with uh, Hattori John Baptiste and uh, Habuta, who was the second editor of One Piece. That would be, um, I think he was the one during Alabasta and such. Uh, they did all of the Treasure Island like search stuff on the original magazines. Uh, these ones, they've been doing uh, more Kumamoto stuff, since that's obviously where uh, Oda is from. And uh, so they have some uh, like uh, nature pictures. They went on some hikes, it looks like. Um, and, it, you know, it's it's mostly just sort of like a, um, uh, you know, travel board um, advertisement type stuff. Come see the um, famous sites of, of Kumamoto. Uh, some they did beef, some, apparently. Yeah, it's some beef. Uh, there's some uh, little paragliding. That, I will uh, say uh, yeah. they had the best beef I've ever had. So <laughs> right. definitely up there. Yeah. It was mm-hmm. Maybe Austin, but at least number two. <laughs> um, they also have uh, one of these pages is about the uh, Luffy statue that was um, unveiled not too long ago. So um, that's uh, that's that's pretty neat. They they have like a list of the the steps for, you know, casting the bronze and, you know, making the mold and. Uh, all of the the different steps that uh, go into producing it, um, and then you ha- then you have the contact information for all of the uh, the parks and restaurants and so on that they visited, um, so that you can go check them out yourself if you're ever in Kumamoto. And uh, following that, we have the fashion segment where uh, this time they have chosen which spread is this? This is the the wanted spread it's like the lineup of all the guys tenth anniversary were, isn't it the 10th anniversary spread is that what it was it it doesn't actually say what the source of the spread is but it's the one where there's like a strip that is uh torn off of their legs and so you see all their hairy legs um even though they're all wearing suits yeah and i think so, that was that might have been the 10th anniversary that was yeah, during thriller the, bark Oh, yeah, it says where they tore the where they tore the thing off. It says anniversary uh, by Frankie's leg. Right, right. What move over? That's uh, what it's called. Inspired strong world too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, very very strong world esque. Um, and so you have some ladies uh, modeling some of these uh, suits that they are uh, wearing, which is um, is kind of neat. Uh, following that, let's see. We have Sanji's cooking corner, the Mugiwara kitchen. Where, uh, believe it or not, he has made a dish for Zoro, and it's apparently not poisoned. Razor um, blades. It's, <laughs> it's a it's a three sword style uh, sushi roll, and um, this definitely looks like American style sushi based on the number of um, crazy toppings and the looks like avocado on top. And don't and be fooled; stuff. they're razor blades. Again, <laughs> or the razor blades. It looks like a radish, maybe, or a pickled something. Yeah, these yeah, do look they, really American. Mm-hmm. They, they look really good, though. Um, and there's like a fried and, something at the top, so also American. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, there's also some samosas, um, some simple samosas. Um, and they have all the, the recipe stuff for um, for putting them together, which um, 
looks like looks like fun probably a lot of work uh let's see oh what does it say Ooh, next time it does ha it has a preview next time is one of nami's favorites the theme will be fruit so uh we will see what that is tangerines probably i would uh yeah dare say that there will probably be some kind of citrus in there uh next is the um the beast illustrations uh which have been going strong throughout all of these this time it is the dragon from punk hazard um the uh the big ugly looking one um and it has a little you know cross section uh with some internal organs and such the fire um, bladder yeah is uh yeah that is there it is yep the um is the dragon's special organ that produces fire um and um i like that that they actually went out of their way to like uh, to take panels from the manga where it's like, you know, Zoro is talking about, oh, wow, it's so strong and, the, you know, the skin is so tough and Luffy's complaining about the, how the skin is so tough. So they they took that and then like wrote up some stuff about how uh, how how hard this must be and and so on. Uh, following that, we have some dragon based background information, which is a really interesting um, just sort of collection of uh, various references to dragons and uh, kind of drawing some uh, thematic uh, ties to that. You know, it talks about uh, all of the instances of dragons relating to Wano, how you had uh, Ryuma, the samurai, who uh, was famous for killing a dragon. Um, you have, uh, you know, Kaido, the dragon, who is sort of worshipped there. And then uh, Momonosuke as the uh, the smile fruit dragon. And, you know, sort of trying to suggest, like, is it possible that maybe, you know, the the smile fruit that he ate was meant to try to copy the fruit that um, that Kaido apparently has? Um, you know, we obviously don't know that for sure, but, um, you know, lots of interesting inferences. The fact that the uh, the people are called the celestial dragons um, and then dragon the character uh so lots of um dragon related stuff sabo's dragon claws and uh and so on so um uh, lots of good um uh, stuff to ponder there what like did, uh, mention, I mean, did they mention oppies no strangely <laughs> enough they did not mention oppies oh what a shame bizarre just a missed opportunity yeah but if only oda had drawn it in the manga then um then we would have had some uh some stuff to go on he didn't. Uh, <laughs> I love this no. next part. It's like highlights for One Piece. Yeah, yeah I love this too. Next, we get the uh, the little like the kids game section um, that you you know you get when with the placemats at the um, at the Denny's. Uh, <laughs> Imagine if they had One Piece placemats at Denny's. I would maybe go to a Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, yeah, it's really adorable stuff. Um, they got lots of little, you know, spot the differences. They they have a Where's Waldo, um, except it's Where's Crocodile and Vivi, I think. Um, and uh, they have all these, you know, characters from Alabasta in the um, in the illustration. I found Panda, Panda Man. Yeah. 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 <laughs> there. Kung Fu uh, Dugong. The Unluckies are there. Tashiki is there. Everybody's there. Oh, there's a bunch of um, Kung Fu Dugongs. They're everywhere. Oh, there's mm -hmm. 15 of them. I see. There's a uh, like a treasure map sort of like count the spaces type game for uh, the map of Skypea. Um, there is a gosh, there's a pattern based thing like figure out the pa the punching pattern from Foxy's giant uh, <laughs> punching tank, the Gorilla Puncher 13. Um, well, see, I and, like the Enry with the Enry with the sleepy eyes in the previous page. Yes. Um, I like yeah, the great. derpy I, looking Foxy too. They have, it, it's a nice, like, uh, you know, he spread out the, the artist really spread out the, um, the arcs as far as what it's covering. So you see a lot of different uh, characters in this very adorable art style. Uh, some water seven stuff. Uh, there's a like fit together the, um, or, or figure out which, pieces are um extra yeah so like there's all these uh, little cut out pieces of the sunny and you have to figure out which ones actually don't are, are not necessary because they're getting doubled up um so that's interesting there's a 
Uh, Tower of Law, CP9 at uh, NES Lobby. Uh, game looks like shoots and ladders. If you wanna, if you wanna go through extra times, it's just, you could recreate the filler um, in those episodes. <laughs> yeah, lots of lots of characters there, and uh, lastly, some uh, thriller bark zombies. And uh, it's, it has there's like a game figuring out which which is the right number because they each have different uh, numbers, and so there's like a uh there there's a connection a, a like a numerical connection between uh the various uh is, zombies is it the same how it is in the manga where like the higher numbers were like the general zombies and the uh certain numbers i forget which were the wild and the soldier zombies is that how the game is broken up mm, no it's, it's just more random like random zombies it looks yeah like. it's, okay. it's like it, it you know, it's like you find the zombie with where both of the numbers to the left and right are smaller than the the actual number on the zombie itself. And so I on. see. I well, see you little, see, math. didn't the tree one end up joining the crew? I seem to remember that. So mm. shouldn't his number be number 10? Um, <laughs> yeah. Kuma in that picture from the the next picture from Shaw Buddy, it, smiling is the creepiest thing I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> yeah, Kuma should not smile. It just it, it's off. It, it recreated the uh, vacation scene uh, on Shabandi with Kuma. I think Robin looks freaked out there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she looks when you like, called um, it a vac- she looks ahead. like Louis. Uh, Tina or not Tina? Um, oh, yeah. Linda Belcher. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. She does. Oh my god. Um, when you called it the vacation scene, I'm like, were they like sitting on like a on a beach at some point during that arc that I forgot? I'm like, oh right, I remember. That might have been the filler. <laughs> that was before Shaw Buddy. Yeah, right before it. Yeah. Oh, I want to go on a vacation, Bobby. <laughs> 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 uh, next we have a an interview i believe yeah this is a carryover from the last issue because they're they're talking to like a sake brewer um and uh i still i still don't quite understand like the connection maybe odo was just like i love sake let's get some sake people in here uh to talk about sake because i i don't see what it has to do with with one piece but um, it does I mean, have a lot of process. Um, they have the brothers uh, cups, the white beard sake, like they go through, I think sure. what sake would have been used in each of these situations. Uh, yeah, when they break true. the On barrel, the second, leaving right. the East blue. And what is this one? I'm trying to, Oh, this is the one from thriller bark before they get there. What's in the, I oh, guess yeah. the explosive the one. Yeah. The floating one. <laughs> Oh yeah, I forgot about that. I, I'm yeah. surprised he didn't do Brinks, uh, Brinks, Binks, Binks. Saki or Binks Brinks, Binks Brinks. Yeah, Binks Brinks. Uh, Brinks. Yeah, that is surprising. Um, yeah, I don't know that's yeah. Funny. I mean, it's a, it's certainly an interesting, uh, you know, field of um, knowledge to. To, to learn about the uh, the the process of how they how they make sake because it is kind of unique among uh, a lot of other um, uh, liquor production around the world. But um, yeah, I got to do that when I was in Kobe, and it was super cool. It's it nice. is very interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, next we have the Mania quiz um, that asks uh, certain questions. Um, a lot of them are very um, extreme. They're extremely obscure, uh, but I think the the first one is kind of uh, interesting. So I'll ask this one because I feel like um, some of us might actually have a chance of answering this. As you can see here, uh, if you have the magazine, of course, um, that it has the uh, color illustrations from the first few color walks. Um, and it is asking, what is, uh, there is one, thing that unites the design yeah. of all of the um the designs that that Oda these illustrations that Oda drew for the covers oh. of uh Color yeah. Walk 1, Color Walk 2, Color Walk 3 um and it says what is it? And, yeah, we've um, had Greg on this show a lot and he's talked mm-hmm. about this a lot and it, okay, this okay. feels like a Greg question. It's right. that there's a there's a monochrome uh animal in each one. The top hat. With a top hat. With a top hat. 
correct? Did I miss yeah. the top hat? <laughs> mm. um, uh, I'm trying uh, to yeah, find the one in Lion because it's very cluttered and it's a small picture. It's a frog. It's off to the right. It's next the frog. Yeah. It's oh, that's the frog. The I'm also colorblind, so for me. <laughs> Sometimes, but no, for, for serious, um, like the, let's say the worm in the first one, like that bow tie might be red for as far as I know. I mean, I guess it isn't, um, but it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But like, for me, I'm not a hundred percent sure that it's not. Um, so I have to take kind of a, I have to take Greg's word for it <laughs> mm -hmm. and everyone else's anyway, go ahead, Stephen. All right. Um, and next we have uh, the uh, arts and crafts section where there is uh, the actually, you know, heavy, heavy paper stock for these next couple pages uh, that are scored because you can make a little paper craft chopper, um, which is uh, quite adorable. I have not um, I have not popped it out of the um, of the paper, but um, it's it's very well labeled um for uh you know which parts you break and which parts you fold and um there's a couple pages of um of uh, instructions to to put it together so um a neat little a neat little bonus there uh, following that we have the uh, super sbs which is where you kind of get into the um some of the fan you know expanded versions of the bonus materials from the um of volumes and such and in this case it's like your your cosplay pictures the theme here was uh usopp and um so some some of them are like serious cosplay some of them are of cats dressed up as usopp it is little knit earphones yeah that one's <laughs> amazing i can't imagine how they got this cat to to pose with all of this stuff on it yeah, Stephen, yeah. you're our local cat expert. Um, right. I, I don't know. I think Brian is the. Beard. I was gonna say Brian. Yeah, Brian, Brian. probably too. Uh, do you think you could get your cat to wear felt headphones for more than I, a second? I tried to get them to wear a little uh, Santa hat, and it didn't work out so well. And now yeah. she's on my lap. <laughs> yeah, you you pretty much you you put it on, and you have your phone in the other hand so that you can take a picture in the two seconds before they tear it off. Yeah. And it helps to have a partner too. And just like, all right, right. You set them up with the phone while you uh, cat wrangle. Right. Right. I realize as a dog person, I'm way outnumbered on this podcast because Steve also had, had cats. Who else? Jill has Alex. cats. Alex, Jill, Alex does. Alex doesn't now, but he, I think he grew up with them. Is that right? His, his parents know. do. Yeah. Okay. That's mm -hmm. not it. Um, yeah. Anyway, um, we have the editors answering uh, questions, which is always um, entertaining, um, where they just pose like, oh, you know, what's this, you know, what, what would you do in this situation? Or, um, you know, what do you want to do when One Piece ends or, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they get uh, a couple of the editors to um, to answer. The one thing, the one that I found was pretty funny was the question that was like, um, what is a memorable a uh, bit of correspondence you got from Oda on like say line, which is their, you know, super popular um, messaging app uh, that was not related to work. So it's not, you know, like what's, what did you, you know, how, how is this chapter looking? It's just something random. And uh, the current, uh, you know, some, some of them are like, um, uh, you know, just kind of random uh, things or like uh, Bati says that, uh, you know, like he he said he he sent Oda some message, not specifically about the um, the chapter, but um, just about something else related to to um, some promotional thing. And he, he thought it was like really he said this one was really good this week. And, and Oda was like, oh, my God, I'm so happy. Like, that's that's great. And it you know came within like two minutes. So. Um, it was, uh, it reminded him of what Oda's personality was like. And his current editor says, uh, the thing that I remember most was the time when he was really excited because he hatched a Snorlax from an egg in Pokemon Go. <laughs> um, so yep. that's our Oda. <laughs> that's our Oda. <laughs> uh, and, um, they have some like sort of Mad Lib style thing where they, they tell people or, or caption this like uh, they take a scene from the manga 
and uh, they say, you know, put put your caption into this uh, text bubble. Um, and oh, that's so, what's going on here. <laughs> I was trying yeah, to figure that's, it out. <laughs> that's what all of these but are. All different fonts. That's what they. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. No, I thought they were like corrections or something over the. Okay, that makes more sense. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. And uh, let's see. There's some some other little stuff. Let's see. There's a. Uh, we're getting into the kind of the more. Uh, the thick of the, uh, the second half of the magazine is usually, uh, once you get past all the glossy pages, that's where they put a lot of like the, uh, the essays and the writing stuff. They have, um, a, a, a really nice piece here from the author of the strong words books, which is the, you know, the guy who picks out like the famous lines or the really important lines in the series and, uh, you know, writes stuff about, uh, you know, how, uh, inspiring this is or how how powerful a statement this is and um so he has a, a lot of, of stuff about uh you know the the power of um the a lot of these really famous lines of um of one piece and, and so on um so it's it's really cool they have a lot of um they, they he picked out a lot of panels uh from throughout the series of um you know instrumental moments and such not expecting to see John Giant there. Right, that was the one before uh, Marineford, where you know, if you if you want to escape, you know, go now. This is your chance, um, sort of thing. Uh, that was his statement. Uh, next, this is a really cool thing. I was really happy to see this. Uh, they have a special Rakugo uh, corner, and uh, specifically, it's it has a lot of information about um, kind of like the the background of Rakugo. And you can see this little hierarchy here where they have picked out various uh, marine characters uh, like, you know, Kobe when he was basically a, a swabby and uh, going up to um, uh, Django uh, at, at a higher rank and then Smoker and uh, Akainu at the top. But what this is, is like the various um, sort of levels of being a Rakugo performer. Mm. Um, and you may recall from from going through the uh, the Wano arc and some of Kaido's uh, men in their ranks, uh, that the top rank is Shin Uchi, which means headliner. Um, and that is where, you know, that's where Oda got the idea for the headliner rank. Um and uh, yeah, f- sure enough, that's you know that that is the one at the very top. That is, um, uh, he says, there's about 200 of them currently in the um, you know the the official Rakugo like federation or or group or um, however it is that they're um, uh, aligned. Um, but also they have a bunch of examples of references to Rakugo stories in One Piece and uh, where a lot of these things uh, came from, um, including uh, like the very first time that we see Kinemon when he's just a uh, you know set of legs and a severed head. Um, like the, that, those um, images came from a, um, uh, or from, from two different Rakugo stories. There's the one called the Head Lantern and the, uh, like the Sliced Torso. Um, and uh, and you know obviously they're not you know explicitly the same as in as what happens in the story of One Piece, um, but the imagery is there, and, and Oda clearly took that and said like, how can I use this? Um, in Doesn't uh, Brooke make a reference to that when he fights Kinemon's upper half torso in the snow, is that part of it? Uh, let's see. He calls the he has the. Um, what is it? The the three blocks, the the humming, humming brook, as as he calls it. I think that was also a um a detail in the uh the head lantern uh story. Um, so he he took that um that detail from uh because he, he they put the uh, the panel in the uh, in the article here of Brook doing his uh, you know closing the the cane um and uh, telling them that they've already been cut. Mm-hmm. Um, we've also got, uh, so Kanjuro, his, his name, his, his evening shower Kanjuro name is Yudachi Kanjuro. And there is a, um, there's a rock and ghost story called Yudachi Kangoro. Um, so he just sort of tweaks the name there. Um, that's a, a character from a rock and ghost story. 
there is the story of the summer doctor um, who is famous for like e- or th- something. There, there's a detail in that story re- involving lettuce. And that is why Conjuro like draws or paints the lettuce in Dress Rosa. And he's like, hey, you guys want some lettuce? Um, so that's a kind of a random <laughs> reference to um, a, uh, a Rakugo story. I think I mentioned that when we, we got to that point. Um, and then there, of course, there is the Spring Sparrow, which was the story about the, uh, you know, the guy who draws the sparrow mural in the on the uh, sliding door of the inn. And then it, you know, comes out and comes to life. That was obviously very uh, closely related to the um, uh, the thing that the Conjuro does to help them fly. Out Where are all the, these uh, uh, guys at the bottom here? Uh, let's see. Those are various. Um, I guess, um, performers of, of Rakugo. Um, okay. They, they, those are four who are famous for performing the spring sparrow, the new case Suzume story. So, uh, I guess they each have their own little take on it or something. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of, a lot of neat, um, stuff there that, um, you know, probably passed by a lot of people. Uh, some of these, uh, passed by me too although some of them i did uh you know discover it as a part of uh trying to translate them uh let's see we have some more uh let's see viva card ads and uh some of the side magazines there's some gag manga stuff from the uh, one of the spin-off artists um about the guy who looks like kobe um there's some more more essays about um, the psychology of uh, the the straw hats and the the ways that one piece can help you uh, you know can can provide a a, a healthy positive outlook on life and and so on. Uh, and now okay here we go now we're that's, getting to the good stuff. I like that though that's a fun mm-hmm. concept. Yeah yeah. Uh, now we get into some of the design sketches stuff. We have uh, Oda's pencil. Uh, storyboards for a, a chapter of Wano. Um, this is the one where uh, they have taken Otama to the tea house where they meet uh, Suru and Okiku. And uh, they are, you know, giving her the, the special tea that that cures her um, from the uh, the poison in the river. And um, uh, so you get to see some some sketches of uh, Okiku and Otsuru and stuff. It's kind of neat. Um, following that, we have a, uh, this is kind of just an arc breakdown. I'm sure some people could, could probably use this where they list, not only do they list all the characters, but they also have all of these straw hats, like Wano names there so that you can keep track of, uh, their, their local nicknames. Uh, you know, Luffy Taro, Zorojuro, Furanosuke, Usohachi, uh, Odobi, Onami, Sangoro, Choperemon, and bone kichi um as well as all of the other locals who uh, we've met and so that's uh, that's pretty useful i think and um sort of explains uh the connection between uh the the various figures there's a little chart although of course this uh i don't know when they put this together but um it's obviously only goes up to volume 91 or so um and so there's a uh, plenty more information that is not contained here uh, as of this recording, so um, uh, it's, it will only get more complicated, I'm sure. Uh, and then we have the Sons of Charlotte um, that um, uh, are uh, being filled out with Oda's designs uh, to accompany the Daughters of Charlotte, which we went over last time. Um, and these are all just the sketches, so uh, they all look pretty like you know uh, prospero katakuri daifuku oven they all look pretty much exactly the way that they do uh, in the finished manga um i'm trying to remember if there were some really interesting uh, much one. like page one snack has his name written across what he's wearing although page one has it across his actual body yeah they it's might have to forget who they are um, I, I, I mean, yeah, that's true. I, I, I wish every character in One Piece had their name written across their chest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
up sometimes. Um, yeah, let's see. Some of I these are interesting, I guess. Yeah, some some of these are are odd. Where it's like, oh, it's like, how did Oda not use these ones? Like, there's this uh, little one named Compo who uh, is look, looks like a little kid um, with a big hat and like a bandana on, and he is the minister of pies. Um, although, oh, yeah, that's like a, a cool kid, design. Yeah. He is age thirty. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, and he comes from. From Pai Pai Island. I told you about those like big mom children age discre- discre- discrepancies Wait, in the song. Right next to Compo is Gelato, uh, is Moscato, Moscato, Minister of Gelato, yes. uh, our Who's favorite 40? character. Well, he was 40 and then he died and, and came back died. later. So he's alive again. Um, I think. <laughs> let's not talk about that. <laughs> That's worse than Pell, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> no, I don't care. Um, I I mentioned the balloons, I think, like, a couple weeks ago in... Or maybe last week. Um, These two guys seem to always have balloons. 45 and 46. I don't know their names. Yeah, Dolce and Droge. Yeah, so Uh, that might answer that. Yeah. Right, they're they're nine. And we were actually talking about this on the anime recap, about the the decouplets combined form is in this magazine. Yeah, uh, that's interesting. The um, Wait, there's a combined form? Where am I? Oh, dude, yeah, that was in the, the last an- one. Gotta watch the anime. Oh. Uh, <laughs> maybe we'll see them in the manga at uh, oh, you, at some point. You do. You do see the combined form. Oh, yeah, there it is. But, yeah. Well, we I mean, like, 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 like front and center. Yeah. Like, you know, taken apart in the story. I mean, um, but yeah, it's kind of interesting. He did a, some uh, some wordplay. So I think the one the one name. OK, the the names that they started off with. So the, the decouplets are. Uh, five boys and five girls and i think the ones that he used as the basis for the names the boy is nugo which i think is supposed to be nougat and the girl is nutmeg um but then he patterned all of the other names after those so nugo there's also nyuichi nyuji nyusan nyushi and nugo so obviously the number is there and then nutmeg there's Natsumeg, that's her name, and then there's <laughs> Akime, Akimeg, Harumeg, and Fuyumeg, and those are all the seasons. So Natsu is summer, Aki is fall, Haru is spring, Fuyu is winter, and then there's Almeg as the fifth one. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, sure that's not a boy named All Might? <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Mm. Maybe double check um, that. And uh, yeah, they um, they combine... Uh, I don't think it says a specific if there's a specific name for the combined form, uh, but it, it is using the gocha gocha no mi, which is like the mix mix fruit, I guess. Um, so that's how they combine into one. Um, let's see. I'm that's trying hard. to look for like more <laughs> more uh, ministers. So uh, let's see. The uh, so Nus Tort, he was the one who looks like Captain Crunch um with the the big like napoleon hat um and the uh the pipe he is the minister of shipping um from package island so uh, the most boring know. of all of the <laughs> islands <laughs> yeah. he's like the logistical um minister and uh wait what's his full what's his full name and title the Nustort, uh minister of shipping from package <laughs> island and i got your package yeah, <laughs> they they're all getting the things he sent them. Uh, <laughs> and uh, Dils March, who is um, we we've seen him, uh, but uh, only by name. I think we, he was never like introduced with the name and picture. So we've seen him separately from his name being mentioned. Uh, he is the minister of tea, um, and he is from Black Island, so a green town on Black Island. So there you go, of course. both kinds. Uh, let's see. Okay, yeah, Gelato, Minister of Pie, um, Tablet, who is the um, he's the really weird looking one who rides the sheep and he has like the sort of tentacle looking swept back hair. Um, uh, oh, actually, yeah, yeah. thirty six years old somehow. Yeah, he is the <laughs> Minister of Topping. Um, and uh, I feel like so Charlotte Potassium Benzoate. 
<laughs> that's yeah, bad. So, that's bad. Uh, he is from, so he's the minister of topping and that's also topping Island, but uh, he is from Deco town. And so I think it's probably Deco short for decoration, but Deco is also forehead. So, and he's got his hair swept back. So um, yeah. that's pretty clever. Uh, San that sheep Mark. looks like, by the way, that sheep he's riding on looks like a Star Wars kind of, what's that animal? Yeah. Yeah. A bantha. Yeah. I guess a little like a bantha, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, a tauntaun. No. Well, I think, yeah. The tauntauns yeah. are the white ones, but the the sheep is more like the bantha. It's like the yeah. huge round yeah, I'm ones. I'm looking this up yeah. to make sure I'm right. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, um, bantha. It looks exactly yeah. like a bantha. Oh, my God. Like, see. Yeah. You okay, got, go ahead. Uh, San Mark, who is from Flavor Island, he is the Minister of Essence. Ooh. Not sure. Charlotte Guy Fieri. <laughs> Minister of Flavor Town. Either that or he is a you know magazine editor for um That's what I was thinking. Like women, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see, what else do we have? We have um uh, yeah, Snack was the minister of frying. I don't know if we had learned that before. Uh, there's Content, who is the, well, he's the minister of content. That's like a jelly, um, it's a, it's a Japanese or an Asian style of, uh, of jelly, like using the, um, what kind of a root, uh, like a special, very starchy root. Who is number 31? Number 31 is Mobile and he is the minister of tasting. Yeah, he looks yeah. like the minister of tasting. He yeah, looks like the most he, pretentious of all of them. He he's he's dressed up like Klaus Nomi um, from mm. the um, uh, what was it, season two of Venture Brothers. Um, he's also one of uh, Big Mom's long arm children. Oh yeah, he is. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, remember his, I remember his design. Nice. Oh look, it's me! I am the minister of tasting. <laughs> mm. Oh, he's the guy from uh, from Ratatouille. What was the food critic's name? Yeah, God, I can't remember the character's name, but he only, <laughs> what was it? If he doesn't like it, he doesn't swallow. Um, <laughs> some of these character designs, <laughs> 31, 33 is really cool. Um, there, there's like a lot of these I, I am very upset we well, did not see more of. No, no, 30, mm. 33 has been in the anime a lot the last two, three weeks. Yeah, yeah fight, that's, fighting that's racing. Yeah, mm-hmm. racing. Well, there's um, the difference between the anime and the manga. I mean, I don't think he was in the manga all that much. I remember Raisin right. now that you mentioned him, but yeah. He, we didn't yeah, get enough, he was seen. We didn't get enough brownie either. Yeah. Well, he he did a heck delayed. of a job. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I'll see myself out. Uh, <laughs> we've got uh we've got Kato. He is the pumpkin man and he is the minister of seeds. I always like that design. Very cool. Um Skelly. Shibust, Shibust, I'm not sure. That's probably some French word. Is the minister of mix? Um, I hope that's like Czech mix. That would be great. Um, we have uh, Mascarpone. Uh, I did not realize this is the uh, minister of cutlery. Um, and Stay he's from Cutlery from Island. Yeah. yeah. Um, I have to go back and look at Mascarpone and see if she was like the same thing or not. She had a fork um, in her hand. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I think that is the last of the ministers because all the the other ones are youngins. The decouplets are all like eighteen, and um, Anglais, the uh, the little kid who rides the caterpillar, doesn't want to brush his teeth. He is uh, fourteen, so he's definitely in that rebellious streak. Um, um, Come on, Anglais, Ang- whatever, Anglais, Ang- wasn't it something? Anglais, Anglais. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, some of the other, some of the other little kids, but, uh, no, no more details on them. I think Oda had a very fun time designing these guys. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, there's a, uh, there's a page. I I'm assuming this must've been like inspired by all of the Viver card, um, information coming out, but there's like a little comparison of sizes between the, the different races of one piece. Um, and so they have like the sort of the silhouettes, um, starting from Manchuri at, uh, 20 centimeters, which is probably what, like eight inches or so. And, um, 
and then going from you know Luffy to Gin to Shanks to Hachi, Crocodile, Jinbei. I think by the time you get to Jinbei, that's probably about ten feet tall. Uh, Blackbeard, is, yeah. yeah, Blackbeard is is taller than that. Magellan is almost five meters tall, so that's you know like five, fifteen, sixteen feet. Uh, Basco shot at uh, five seventy three centimeters, and then uh, the the giant. Uh, races you have dory who is uh 22.6 meters little ors jr is 38 meters and then the san juan wolf who of course is infamously able to to grow and and shrink to an extent at his largest he is 180 meters tall so he's almost a fifth of a way to a kilometer tall I hope 590 maintain- feet yeah yeah i hope he maintains his the largest thing in the series yeah, He's or, pretty or maybe huge. yeah, we'd have to find out what um, Zunisha is as far as size, but our, uh, yeah, that's uh, true. Wada, Wada Sumi, uh as well. He's super yeah. big. He's so, guys, big, I yeah. I googled what is five hundred and ninety feet. You know, uh, like what 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 notable thing? The world's largest yacht was five hundred ninety feet as of twenty thirteen. Okay. So. Um, I don't care. Uh, but that's that's about that. Mm-hmm. So Sam um, Wolf finally has his own boat. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um. Then we have uh, let's see. They have the answers to the uh, the trivia, and then uh, after this, they have a special interview between two guys. There's a uh, Kenji Kamiki, and there's some guy I've never heard of before. A uh, Greg Wana. Hmm. I wonder who that could be. I don't know. No idea. Greg Greg Warner, I'm sure. That's that's probably like the <laughs> least favorite thing, Greg, you could ever call Greg. Uh Greg Warner, our very own Greg. So from um, now on, we will be introducing him as that. His uh, <laughs> no. his big polo shirt. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yeah. Um, and, uh, they have a, you know, these are obviously two kind of the two most famous or visible of the, um, the, the one piece mania that, uh, Shueisha and Toei and so on have, have worked with. And, uh, so they just have like a really cool, uh, you know, sort of fan to fan, like, just like, what are the things that you love about, uh, one piece or what are the things that, that strike you about one piece and like the rereadability and, uh, you know, they, they're talking about like their favorite uh, villains or the fact that they don't really they don't hate any of the the villains because they're all they're all either interesting in their own way or, you know, you could even argue that they all have kind of their own reasoning for acting the, the way that they do. Uh, Greg says that his his favorite, his eternal favorite villain is always going to be Arlong. Um, and um you know how how impactful it was to see that that you know horrible flashback scene uh with uh, with Belmare and um uh gosh let's see they talk a lot about Wano um where where Greg points out that or he uh, he explains that yeah people overseas too are like, like super excited about Wano that it's um everyone is is hyped up and um they they talk about how kind of cool it is that there are so many uh, you know, aspects of sort of old timey Japanese c- culture that are touched upon. And, you know, they're in a one piece sort of way, but they're the sort of things that like if you were a tourist and you were visiting Japan and you you would see like a, um, a Komainu, uh, like at a shrine or something like that and be like, oh, I recognize that that's from one piece. And uh, the fact that, you know, they can help sort of broaden recognition of these, uh, you know, cultural items and, and such. Um, Actually, I wanted to uh, mention uh, cool. uh, a couple pages earlier. They had the on the page with the answers. They had a couple of the uh, panels from Wano that were directly inspired by like ukiyo-e paintings. Oh yeah, that's right. Um, the uh, the Hokusai. Uh, yeah, they have the, the thirty six views. The, the wheel. Of Fuji. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I had not seen the wheel. I had not noticed the wheel. I I don't think that's a wheel. I think that's a basin. That uh, oh, like a bar- a big barrel. Right, one. right. Hmm. Um, that he is fashioning. Um, um, but yeah, that's, uh, that, that, that's a very neat one. Um, and, uh, they talk about the, you know, the, the depth of the, the story and how, 
you know, you can you can still find new angles to view like these very big events in the series, uh, even after you've read them. So, you know, however many times uh, you'll you'll find new perspectives on them and, and so on. And um, yeah, so it's just a it's a really cool um really really nice interview that really kind of sums up what those guys are are all about and um uh the reasons that they that they love this series so much um next we have some one piece fortunes where um you know depending on your uh your birth year and month you get uh put into one of 10 categories uh corresponding to a uh character which one was I? Uh, yeah, I was under Usopp's category. Um, and then it just has some, you know, the usual sort of astrology, I'm nonsensical chopper, stuff. Uh, you're Chopper? Yeah. Okay. Well, your lucky item is a black hat and your lucky <laughs> feed, your lucky food is beans. Wow, so. that is, okay. That explains <laughs> my me. lack of luck. <laughs> do me, do me. Well, you, have to, uh, you have to do it in the. Oh yeah, you yeah, have the. Yes, you uh, have to. You have to tell everyone your birth year and month June, on the air. June fifteenth, nineteen eighty two. Wow. Okay. Now we could steal all his information. Yeah. Uh, sure. Right. And, uh, uh, and, and my also social security work. is. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see. That's steal my debt. Pay it for me. He's number one. Okay. Oh, Brian's under Zorro. Yes. <laughs> your lucky item is uh, photographs. And your lucky food is, is that cocky? Uh, I think that's, um, yeah, I think this is plums, maybe. Mm. Ed is Jinbei. All so, right. Yeah. Nice. Uh, Jinbei is, where is Jinbei? Um, all right. Your lucky item is jewels. Um and your lucky food is uh, peaches or plums. Hmm. Mine, let's see, what is mine? Uh, I'm Usopp. Yeah. My lucky item is a brown bag. Um, <laughs> like I don't think they're talking about a paper bag, but, oh, you know, like a, hey. Like a brown bag special? You got to bring the yeah. spirit? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like it. a purse or uh, a purse. Yeah. And uh, my lucky food is corn. So cool. Um, True American. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. That um, and yeah, that, that's um, that is it. And then of course at the back they have the um, the bounty poster, which uh, in this issue is Zorro's. Um, we were talking before we recorded that I don't think me or Zach have taken out any of our wanted posters, um, or to or you know or otherwise defaced any of these uh, precious magazines. So um, I did take it out no, to look at it. Yeah. So the next one comes out on June 24th, it looks like. No, that's uh, May 24th. May 24th. Uh, I could five. read things. Yeah, because yeah, uh, June 24th, it would, be, uh, it would be summer already. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot they're seasonal. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And this okay. is actually the last of the Admiral's colors that we know of. So we'll see what color next, chap next one is. And do you think we're going to stick yeah. with Luffy on the front of all these? I guess so. Probably, yeah. It's like the Oprah magazine. <laughs> yeah, it puts some other joker on the cover. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so that's going to do it. Uh, why don't we move into the next segment? Thank you so much for doing that, right. Stephen. That was fun. Yeah. This is the double anime recap for episodes 874 and 875. I'm your host, Sam, and today with me we have, once again, you won't believe it, we've got Ed. Hey! Yes, I'm here. And joining us also today, we have Rick and Morty's Brian Newton. Uh, I totally believe that. And also we have our good friend, Jill, Minister of Chill. Hello, everyone. Don't believe the news. I am here. Yeah, you, know, you have to get a new nickname. Or the anime is, the Whole Cake Island is almost it's finally almost over. I know. God, we're all gonna have to have Wano nicknames. Oh, I guess that's true. I was trying to start that earlier. Yes. I've please. got I've got Sam Taro on lock. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, our okay. first episode this week is 874, The Last Hope, The Sun Pirates Emerge. The title card begins at 4 minutes and 18 seconds. It is Sanji arriving on the sunny just as all the tart ships are closing in on them and shooting cannonballs. Carrots are chewing Luffy. Uh, uh, Luffy saying, oh, you guys, you, you kept me waiting so long. And they're like, yeah, right. Uh, Chopper asks Luffy if he beat Katakuri. Luffy smiles and says, yes. And Jinbei has this look on his face that's like, it's, his expression says, I, I mean, I totally believed in you, man, but I don't know if I really believed in you that much. <laughs> I think Jinbei is the only one who really realizes the significance of that on like the scale of world powers. Yeah, yeah and he's definitely. he's affiliated with the Big Mom Pirates, so he kind of yeah. has a, a greater understanding of how tough Katakuri is. Uh, Chopper gets to treating his wounds, notices that Sanji has a bullet wound in his arm, but Sanji's, Sanji's just telling him, oh, don't worry about me, just focus on Luffy. We come to Peanut Town on Nuts Island. Uh, Monde is cutting some buildings in half to save some citizens who are getting crushed under all the debris. She, she's cutting the buildings very slowly. <laughs> uh, I like, uh, so we have Beanie Bean Town on Munchie Island which I assume is where uh, Daifuku is from. Uh, they're wondering if pudding's cake will be enough. Uh, there's Sherbert Town on Ice Cream Island. We get to see a, an elephant... Ma- ma- is it a mink? An elephant mink? Uh, no, because... They are mammals, so... But it's not just mammals. It's like fur cover. It's like... They, they, I think minks have to be specifically furry, don't they? Uh... Was there a comment hmm. about that? Well, I don't think so. He could be a mink, I think. But like, we also had like <laughs> crocodile dude in the woods, so it could just be right, right, an exactly. elephant with Big Mom's powers. Who knows? Mm. I, I I probably put my money on being a homie than a mink. There's a lot of uh, checking oh right, in. you can do that too. Mm-hmm. Yeah, homie animals. Uh, so we come. We we have the scene where we're bringing the cake to Fluffy Island. Uh, the the fire tank pa- pirates are saying goodbye to their ship. It's I forgot that this happened because the Nostra Castello is like such a cool, memorable ship, yeah. and we're watching it just burn and crumble into the water. Yeah, I didn't forget. This is still traumatizing. Uh, everyone's going inside of Bedge's body except for Chiffon, who's standing her ground. Uh, she's saying, "Hey, uh, Bedge, hold Pez for me," because she wants to she wants to make sure Mom eats that cake. We have a little sequence with Montdora and Perospero on the phone. Uh, Perospero is having his arm patched up because he went t- he went too long with got- without getting uh, medical treatment for his severed arm. Uh, so I guess you can't you can't just live off of candy that long. Uh, and he's he's very tired. He's like out of breath. Uh, he's dying basically. And there he's an old man. He's like fifty. Yeah. Do you think he can get diabetes? I mean, he's made of candy, right? Like, right. would it yeah. work? I think he's already got it. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. He needs a shot. He's just, he, he's just been living with it for his whole life. Uh, so they're laying out what they consider to be the three possible outcomes. We get little animations of, of these things happening to Big Mom as they imagine it. Uh, first, the cake is obviously poisoned. They're, they're, they're not doubting that situation. They're, they're convinced that the cake is poisoned. But the outcomes are, one, mom eats a cake, it's poisoned, and it kills her. And we see her, like, dropping dead. Uh, two, the poison uh, doesn't kill mom. She, t- she toughs it out, but it tastes bad, and she keeps rampaging. Uh, she, her hunger pangs persist. Uh, and three, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of dialogue like this in this episode. People talking about things that could happen or things that have happened or things that might happen, but not doing much. Yeah, basically, all the action is safe for next the next episode. Yeah, they're yeah. they're kind of they're trying to like distract us with the possibilities. They want us thinking about the possibility is, but they don't want us thinking about what the actual result is. They don't want us to know that yet. Uh, yeah, and and the third option is that the cake is good and uh, the world is saved. Uh, they notice that you forgot, about the, you forgot about the fourth option, Sam. What's the fourth option? Come on. The cake is a lie. <laughs> <laughs> that is old. <laughs> I'm speechless. 
I'm yes, thank you. I know. I'm old. I get it. Uh, so uh, they noticed that Morgans and Stussy have left, which is bad news. Uh, Chiffon just really believes in Sanji's cooking, and we're watching Mom approach the cake, uh, as we will for another episode and a half, basically. The I catch the episode, and then we're back to the Sunny, where uh, like Smoothie and Daifuku, their fleets are are showing up, but then Judge shows up with the big Germa castle, and they're blowing everything out of, out of the water, clearing the path for the Straw Hats more. Uh, he doesn't want to talk to Sanji though. This isn't this isn't like a final goodbye between father and son. This is Judge being like a jerk and being like, "Hey, Luffy, Straw Hat, what the fuck? This guy sucks." Yeah, he's, yeah. he's berating Luffy, asking him like, "What's so great about my failure of a son? His skin doesn't work as a shield. He cooks because he has no royal pride. He's got soft mind and does things for other people." Uh, and we got this like really really good dramatic music playing. Uh, Judge is waiting for his answer. Luffy takes a big breath, a deep breath. <sighs> All right, see ya. Thanks. And then they just sail <laughs> off. One of the greatest moments in this arc. So good. <laughs> it's like, oh man, I'm surprised. Why did he, why did he just start listing off all your good qualities? Aww. Says Luffy. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Chopper and Carrot are, they're like, yeah, what? The? They're, they agree with Luffy and Jimbei is just laughing. I love, I love Jimbei laughing. Oh, you guys are so great. It's such an incredible moment because when you compare it to the the send off that Luffy has, and I should say Zeph has with Sanji in during the Barati act, Barati act, it's just like a polar opposite. But then Luffy's reaction is totally the same. Just like, okay, bye, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the fleet is uh, they're getting more powerful. Uh, Daifuku's genie weenie shows up and starts attacking Carrot, but Sanji's like jumping in and kicking his spear thing away. Uh, there, the, things are looking dire, but then a giant face starts to emerge from the water and we hear a booming, high pitched, squeaky voice. So to trouble boss, I won't forgive. And, uh, what out to me emerges from the water and starts wrecking every, everything. Uh, Chopper remembers what out to me from Hody's crew, which I thought was interesting. Like he only thinks of what out to me as an enemy still. Well, I mean, like you got to forget that. <laughs> like of any of Lodi's crew well, I, mean, I like, think Manatsumi would be the one you remember the most It's we've seen a lot of like Jinbei and the Sun Pirates interacting with Wadatsumi like the audience is already used to Wadatsumi being a good guy now yeah but Chopper and the others have had no interaction with Wad- Wadatsumi right, but, uh, that's a thing you can forget and take for granted I think mm-hmm. uh, and there so Jinbei is shocked he jumps in the water just like is, is, this, is this what I think it is and uh the, the shadows kind of like move across his crew, revealing them, revealing Praline, revealing Aladdin. Uh, let's let us be your subordinates one last time, boss Jimbei. And they're like correcting themselves like, oh, uh, we're not supposed to call you boss anymore. But uh, Jimbei is shocked and amazed to be continued. Uh, episode 875, a captivating flavor, Sanji's cake of happiness. The title card begins at three minutes and 15 seconds. There's like basically no recap in this episode. Although the title card spoils the the flag thing where we see the flag yeah. in the water and like it, it's like the complete flag and then it fades into the, the tattered flag. It doesn't really take anything away from it for me. If no. anything, it was the last episode that was uh, didn't. It, it was sort of uh, over. Um, it, it was uh, it was full of a lot of air. Last episode. This episode has all the action. I, I thought I thought the first episode overall was more evenly paced than this one, but this one, like the highs are so high. Right. Uh, so we see uh, moms. She's close to the cake now. Her hair drops. The fire fades and Prometheus turns back into like a regular cute cartoon son. Uh, Capone is trying to get Chiffon to run, but she's not budging. And yes, he, he has to pick her up and just run off. Uh, the uh, Big Mom Pirate. This is this is where I got kind of annoyed. Where the uh, Montdora and Parasparo and all of them, they're just repeating everything they said last week about like what they think is going to happen. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I guess that didn't really bother me because I was watching. I actually I didn't rewatch the last week's episode right before watching this one, mm-hmm. so I guess I'd kind of forgotten it. Uh, so Mom's like reaching for the cake. There's a lot of like her hand 
seeping into the frosting of the cake and stuff in her face. Uh, Chiffon's, well, that's good Foley work. Chiffon's uh, inner monologuing, the man who baked this cake is a true chef. And we get this little flashback to Sanji. Uh, he's he's like adding extra steps to the recipe. He's like smiling, thinking about how, how happy Big Mom is going to be with the cake. Uh, and everyone's like shocked by this. Like, what? She's the enemy. How, how could you care about her enjoyment at this point? Uh, but he's a cook. He just loves cooking. Uh, she goes, so Big Mom's taking a good bite of the cake and she screams and she, and she falls back and we're kind of meant to wonder for a second, like, what happened? Did she just die? Like, was it so delicious it killed her? Uh, but then she's like looking up at the sky and Jill Choir comes in, which I thought was a nice touch. <laughs> the, the beams of light. Yeah, I love, this, I, love this whole, I love this whole scene. It we, it's been... It's been a long time since we've heard this song, right? Because it's one of the like classic One Piece themes, yeah. that Angelic Choir mm. uh, theme. Yeah. Uh, when I feel like there was probably like a Drum Island episode that was used in. Uh, but anyway, sounds right. Sounds right. We got we got Big Mom's big sparkly shojo smile. It's so delicious I could die, but she's not going to die. She's invincible. Uh, so Big Mom starts singing. I, the thing that I was a little disappointed by, I, did, I, was, I was hoping that this would be like an entirely new song. Uh, it's basically just uh, the melody is more or less the same as when we were first introduced to Big Mom. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm not disappointed by that. I expect it to be kind of carry on the same melody as, a, as it's like a through arc of a conclusion or like if you're watching an opera or yeah. play. Yeah, it makes yeah. sense. Although I just like, I don't know. I've been waiting for one of these whole cake island songs to be like bink sake level of like oh we're you have to watch the anime version of this what the first song her first song was like that yeah i i it's i don't think of it on that on that level all right okay (laughs) um so big mom she's singing she's like back to her regular size she got the calories back uh peril sparrow is gleefully announcing to the country that everyone is saved we're cutting back and forth to different islands they're celebrating uh, pudding did it and i like how the the music kind of has to stop and goes quiet and we we fade to pudding in the alleyway hugging her legs like no it wasn't me it was someone else someone else who's amazing it was um, very sweet uh we got some of the the sun pirates uh jimbe and the sun pirates are talking we didn't uh he's uh, jimbe is asking why they didn't, they didn't just escape and they're like well we all agreed to say goodbye together uh, we want to open up a new final sea route for you guys. Um, and uh, Wadatsumi is smacking boats around all over the place. Uh, it's nice see... to have that guy on your side. Yeah. <laughs> we've, got, we've, got fishman... especially. <laughs> we've got fishermen pirates like boarding. The... This is a proper like pirate fleet battle. Like People are jumping back and forth on different ships and getting into sword fights. And uh, the path is opened. It feels very like kind of Moses-like although the water is not actually parting. It's just the ships. Uh, like in, instead of water parting, it's just a bunch of like trashed up pirate ships. Uh, Jim Bay thanks them. And uh, as they're, he's steering the ship, he's leading them out of the, out of big bombs territory. And, and he's wondering why he didn't notice his friends helping him this whole time. He's kind of putting two and two together. Like, Oh, that's why the territory slugs went away. Um, and stuff like that. He's explaining it for the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, in case we forgot. Definitely. Uh, only Jimbei's friends could do this, uh, Luffy says, and he's he's very, very tired. <laughs> like, his eyes are half closed. He's uh, Mayumi Tanaka is, is sounds just very exhausted. Uh, we get to see, this is, this is one of those cases where uh, this wasn't super clear in the manga. I guess this was like a fan theory that got confirmed in probably the magazine, right? Magazine five confirmed that the, the couplets uh, merge into that big scythe guy. Um, maybe cause you didn't, you didn't see them merging in the manga. You just kind of, I just kind of assumed that was just some other, I think it was an yeah. SBS answer, but maybe it was the magazine. I don't remember off the top of my head. Yeah. I had no clue. This was even a thing. So when I saw this in the anime, I was completely blown away and surprised <laughs> by it. Yeah, and it looks awesome too. Uh, this is one yeah, of those. Dope. I love it, but the noise it makes—I don't know what it is. I think maybe like I watched the Vine or something back in the day, where like it was that like start of a scream, and then it just like kept going and got like higher pitched. <laughs> but the scream was so weird to me; 
it it felt like it was going to be a comedy thing. <laughs> so the uh the decouplets they merge supposedly one of the decouplets has devil fruit that allows them to do this um they turn to that big scary looking grim reaper man uh, and they're fighting the the vin smoke kids oven is coming through a mirror it's not really clear where he is uh but they're his his cronies are asking him like why aren't you staying on cacao island uh, and he says i left germa to brulee and we see you can see the heat radiating off the yeah, he's so mad. the mirror yeah it's great uh, we see Brule. She's kind of delivering the the armor piercing bull- bullets that they had planned to use on the Vinsmokes at the wedding. Uh, they're kind of coming in through the mirrors, and uh, Oven's on the shore. He's trying to track the the thousand sunny. Uh, I catch. Uh, we see Judge holding the fort back at his castle. Things are going crazy. Uh, really good fight animation uh, on on Germa versus the decouplets fusion thing. And uh, I, the this is one of the this is another one of those like kind of very distinct animators. This is I think it's Yoshikazu Tomita, who's got the very like it's not quite like it's not the same thing as Shida, but he's the guy who does like all the heavy black shadows and all the crazy movement, which I I always feel uh, hot and cold on depending on the episode. But because because uh, this episode is so kind of dark and weird, I like I like the I like all the black shadows and stuff. Yeah, especially during that. Uh, the, during the song, the, the couplet, especially. Yeah, during the song, but also the the, the couplet fight. Yeah. Uh, and uh, it's often easy to forget. This is like a night battle. It's like literally the middle of the night, so it makes sense. So Ovens, he's burning the ocean. He's making the, the water too hot for the fishmen, including Wadatsumi. Uh, Chopper's asking, Luffy, what should we do? And Luffy's being a captain. He's marching forward. We advance. And then the music fades out again. Uh, the Queen Mama Shanter shows up. And then new music starts. The mom song is back, except now it's so, so much weirder and darker than it's ever been. Uh, I didn't take a whole lot of detailed notes on this. I just thought the whole the whole of it was so nuts. <laughs> yeah, because like, I remember the, the the dead puppies dancing line in the manga. I did not think that they would visualize it. The pet yeah, cemetery a, thing is weird. <laughs> it's such a weird line. It's probably something that's lost in translation. Yeah, uh, but well, the visuals made it clear that it's it's t- being very literal. <laughs> yeah, but also it seems like it, it the the puppies are eating parts of the cake, and it's so good that it's literally bringing them back, which is makes Moria happy. Yeah, yeah. well, because it's implied that all the it's like it's almost like all the dead animals and stuff are in her stomach like she ate them before and now she's eating the cake and now everything that's inside of her gets to be happy too which is kind of like her yeah. whole philosophy in life like oh, the whole that. world the whole world would be a much happier place if everyone lived in my stomach get in my belly uh <laughs> it kind of it has like a very child's logic on how like uh when you consume an animal what happens it doesn't get like shitted out later it just literally lives in your belly <laughs> and if you eat all the pieces then you get a full animal yeah, they went very hard on this sequence. Like they knew what this the bad end musical was, and they they're milking it. Uh, the way they cut it with the uh, the straw hats and the ship. Uh, yes, very ambiguous. I love that. Yeah, like, that was good. Well, like all these really quick, intense cuts. Like the lighting is very harsh. The 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 cuts are so fast and like twisted, and it's the it's See, the like contrast. The, the sparkly the sparkly background. Yeah. Like the, yeah. yeah. And like the straw hats are getting like tossed around and they're like flying in midair, but in like slow motion. It's the it's the contrast between like the the gleefulness of the song, the you know, the the kind of gross lyrics and then the straw hats just getting absolutely wrecked. Like it's not they're not pretending even like a little bit that the, the straw hats are are winning this fight. Yeah, not it's even just, just the straw hats. It shows like Germa and everything, too. It's basically a culmination of everyone getting screwed. Yeah, they're getting shot up. They're getting riddled with bullets. I also have to say, I love the fact the song officially starts when the Big Mama, Big Mama's Queen Cantor shows up. One of, the, in my opinion, next to the Casa no, uh, Novella, one of the best ships in the series. Yeah, and uh, throughout the song, like you see the, it's shooting cannonballs, and it's like getting gradually closer to hitting the Sunny. 
Mm -hmm. Uh, We get, you know, mom's hallucinating. She's imagining all the kids and Mother Carmel celebrating her birthday together. She's so happy. Uh, It's got it's that that's what's so great about it. It's it's the it's the happiness that she's feeling, but the happiness in context is so fucked up. I, I didn't get to mention this on the anime review when Mama's first sh- song popped up, but the quality of the music and like the the mood of it kind of reminds me of like Adam's Family if you've ever seen those movies. Yeah, where it's like the fun fancy family, but really morbid shit going on. Yeah, uh, and yeah, it has this kind of like scary clown, sad clown kind of. Yeah, well, the, well, the part where she, the part yeah. where she's. The part where she's talking to the Mother Carmel picture is very sad. Yeah. yeah. And then it talks to her. Well, oh, it, it I, nods at it her. It just nods. nods. Yeah. yeah. Which was great. I love that moment. If they if they really wanted to twist a knife, it would have been like a wink. At like the same <laughs> at like the, the same kind of vibe, the same kind of animation quality, but just like like just a, a really goofy wink at this really sad part of the song. Uh which also reminds me of of another part, one of the the parts of animation is when mom her like cheeks are stuffed and she's smiling. She's like shaking her head back and forth, and it's like weirdly highly animated as her jowls. Like, oh kind of yeah, roll I know over exactly face. what part you're talking about. Mm-hmm. It's very strange. I don't know, maybe because she's head on or something. <laughs> the way her cheeks move is so strange. Well, that uh, panel, yeah, that panel is in the manga, but her she her face isn't moving, so they decide to add a little extra flourish. <laughs> yeah, um, that was the beginning of the song, I think. Right? Yeah, yeah, in the yeah, early yeah. part. Yeah. And then uh, the flag, a flag at the end. Yeah. yeah, and then so the ship gets blown out of the water. The Thousand Sunny just completely destroyed. Uh, the or last, does it? Mm. Yeah, the last yeah. shot of the episode is the the iconic, oh so marketable straw hat Jolly Roger, just like torn to shreds, laying in the ocean as as mom is coming down from her euphoric high and going, <laughs> oh, so delicious. Like just the mm. the contrast of tones is amazing. And- she also thanks them for the cake. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's there's excellent. There's also a foreshadow at the end of the song when uh, the giant spiritual head of Big Mom like climbs down and devours the crew on the <laughs> ship right before it gets blown up. Yeah. Uh, any general thoughts on these two episodes, you guys? I I, I really enjoyed the second episode visually. Um, yeah, I I like the the scene with uh, from the first episode with. Um, the judge and Luffy. I thought that was a good scene. I think the money was in the second episode. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think they were both um, well done animation wise. Um, but yeah, obviously the second episode kind of is so climactic. Um, every song with Big Mom is fantastic. I loved the way that the visuals kept switching between uh, her happy go lucky like song about the delicious cake, but then every time she said risky, it got really creepy. Um, and I mean, just like it was in the manga too, but the dead puppies thing is so strange to me. <laughs> I <laughs> I guess I get it, but like, oh, uh, it's so good. I love I love seeing mom um like singing um and just like the way that you also saw the straw hats like battling for their lives as big mom's having the time of her life. It's great. I'm really excited for next episode. Ryan. Uh, yeah, I thought both episodes were pretty serviceable, uh, and to match what everyone else is saying, because it's absolutely true, the last part of the, of the second episode definitely the standouts. Uh, the song was great, a lot of the Germa, Germa fight stuff was cool, um, they definitely put their money in, uh, with the, um, with the, essentially, no pun intended, the execution of the Straw Hats fight with the, uh, Big Mama Chanter, or Queen Chanter. Uh, and I think we may not get any musicals for a while, so I think they just kind of threw their whole butt into it uh, just We've to have one fun more. with it. Oh, you think that would be a musical? I mean, it, it's a song in the... Song? It's a song in the manga, right. Okay, so there next episode. Be. Or is it two episodes from now? Two, two episodes, episodes from yeah. now. Got it. Uh, yeah, look forward to it. Yeah, I liked both of these episodes quite a lot. I thought that the first one, like it doesn't, it's not like super uh, interesting animation wise, but it's super interesting art wise. Like I think that they're really, they're really going in on the, 
the kind of color atmosphere that I think is is really working for it, where everything is kind of overcast and blue, but then you've got, you know, everything's on fire, so you've got orange as this kind of light source. Uh, and I thought that the the first of these two episodes, I, just, I loved looking at it. Like, I, there were many shots where I just loved looking. I mean, this, this is generally what some of my favorite episodes are, is when the characters' faces are just polished and detailed enough to just be fun to look at and like look at all the wrinkles on their faces and, and the expressions that they're making. Uh, and I thought that that episode also had a great, had a good variety of scenes between uh, talking about uh, what they think is going to happen to the cake and, and imagining what big mom's going to do to uh, Sanji and judges final encounter to the sun pirate showing up at the end. Uh, I thought that episode in general was just really, really good. And then the big mom episode which uh, for me, it's like a five minute episode because it's the last five minutes that are really uh, that interesting. And, uh, but they are crazy interesting. They really, really went hard on the morbid, the ugh, not more morbid, bidity. Is that even a word? The morbidness sure. of it. Uh, which is important because I think that's so. I think th- it's like the punchline to the entire arc, you know. Uh, I think I think a good a good juxtaposition is is in this one episode where you've got uh, Sanji baking the cake, uh, th- being excited, getting excited about uh, Big Mom and how she's going to react to the cake. And at the when you're watching a scene like that, you're kind of just expecting you, you assume it's playing it straight, like oh yeah, like Sanji's just like that good of a dude who ki- who loves cooking and loves satisfying his customers. But the the context, the the result, the fact that she likes it so much that it's almost just the situation almost becomes worse because of it. Um, I think that's a big part of what this arc is saying. Like it's it's you've got these all these heroes, Big Mom and the Straw Hats. They're all they're creatures of just like following their heart, you know, just doing the thing that they were put on this earth to do. The problem is that Big Mom's thing was uh, eating people. But yeah, I don't know. I, just, I think that's such a <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think that that duality is is purposeful, and mm. I think that this is not a like the, the, the straw hats they'll get away, but metaphorically they just died. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. All right, uh, are you ready to move on to the next segment? I am ready. Yes. All right, let's move. My name is Zach Logan, and I am the Minister of Piecing It Together, which is way more exciting than the Minister of Shipping. I'm just going to say that. It's true. Um, Why don't we get started? There's a a lot of people on the internet who would disagree with that. (laughs) Yeah, everyone on the internet is the Minister of Shipping. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, okay. Um, So wait, who would Nustort be shipped with? That's the question. Um, Hmm. All right, mm-hmm. we'll think about that while we answer your questions. Let's start with Reddit, Stephen. All right, we will start with uh, Super Trooper ninety two, who uh, with an off week, I want to ask an off base question. I play a lot of the mobile game One Piece Treasure Crew, Treasure Cruise, where Cruise. each character has some beautiful artwork, and I have noticed a trend: people wear the weirdest crap in the One Piece world. From Doflamingo's entire ensemble to Kid's crazy pants to Shank's funky pants, these people wear some unique stuff. What's your favorite clothing choice in the One Piece world? I am between Law's winter gear with nothing beneath in Dressrosa or Usopp's overalls after the time skip. Thanks for all the hard work and have a great day. So th- do, I can't do, tell do, if... Movie? Is he asking like ridiculous outfits that we like or just outfits I we genuinely so. like? Because there's I like, like Chopper's a difference. pink terry cloth robe. Was that what yeah, I do like. I know what you're talking uh, about. The filmsy, I think. Mm. Uh, Phil, okay. The, mo- the yeah. most the the movies are just a minefield of. Oh crazy. my god! Yeah. The what was it? The what was the brand that sponsored film Z that had those ridiculous outfits? Mm. Oh, 
Do you remember they were all wearing like these slick designs? I can't remember. They yeah. when I say slick, they also looked ridiculous. Oh, they, you mean they, like most of the boys, right? Yeah, yeah. Like after they a, got out of the spa. Yeah, I remember that. That was like this that is, felt like not even in world. I'm like, that's like right, plausible. Oh, right. <laughs> uh, the 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 or the uh film gold ones at the beginning were absurd i'm just picking mm-hmm. the most absurd ones right now mm-hmm. uh my actual favorites are way more boring than that i like the strong world suits those are probably gonna normally be my top um, yeah I, those are great yeah especially I in like the color Zorro's spread. like full body green robe thing that he wears these days i think mm. yeah that's one of my favorite Zorro outfits that's cool. um I mean, I love all the stuff so far from Wano. Um, that's fun. Uh, Usopp's uh, outfit from uh, Usopp and Robin's outfit from Dressrosa. I really enjoyed those. Uh, my least favorite are the twentieth cen- uh, the twentieth century boys, the twentieth anniversary <laughs> outfits. Um, I was trying to think of better things than the twentieth anniversary outfits. Mm-hmm. Um, trying to, what else do I do? I like. Uh, whose style would you say like there. you kind of dig? I mean, Crocodile is like one of the most like stylistically savvy people in the series. Like Crocodile could fit pretty well in the real world. I mean, he would yeah. be a Bond villain. Let's be fair, but, but I think Iceberg has good, good taste. Yeah, Iceberg? yeah, I think so. Oh yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like a little unique, but also good. Um, I'm mm-hmm. trying to like think. I'm gonna look. I like Jimbei is comfortable there. <laughs> Uh, he would wear a muumuu. <laughs> I'm 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 everything about what Khalifa wears. He doesn't want to look like a weirdo. Yeah. Um, um. What about what the unluckies were? Sorry, I'm looking through the One Piece magazine again and trying to get ideas. Uh, obviously, mm. Bon Clay has the best style. Mm. End of story. <laughs> What's the next question? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, not the reality I wanted says, uh, I want to know what you would think if Queen ended up being a saber tooth tiger. So Cat Viper could have a go at Queen being felines and all. Or do you think the Wano battles are going to be like top three fighters versus monster trio? Also, is Afro Luffy an homage to Muhammad Ali? Also, do you guys still watch The Simpsons? And what are your favorite episodes of The Simpsons? So let's just get all these questions out there. Okay, so first, yeah, is there going to be a cat fight? Um, <laughs> where is... Cat, so. cat Viper's not on Wano right now. He's yeah, with the, he's he, doing, he's the Marco party right he, now. But he should be on his way to Wano. That's true, but... Regardless. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, well, I don't see that. The, the only... I like Queen as a saber tooth tiger, but the only reason yeah. I'll nix it is because King isn't a sloth. Oh, and also, didn't we determine Queen's going to be an elephant wa- uh, elephant seal? I mean, <laughs> just, that's, that's yeah. yeah. Um, the monster. So, what was the what? Or do you think it's going to be more like more like group? Uh, you know, group battles of like the the three calamities versus the monster trio. Um, hmm. I kind of doubt that, especially yeah. for like major. Uh, villains like that i don't think oda usually you know groups them together the smaller guys sure like maybe all the headliners or I mean, something but queen considering what's about to happen queen may not make it out of this prison yeah you know we know big mom's coming for him and mm-hmm. and um, luffy's there and luffy's there yeah um okay is afro luffy an homage to muhammad ali like <laughs> what like 95 no, percent I... probable I, I would imagine. Yeah. Like sure. as as, maybe. I thought there was just an obsession with afros in Japan. That's always yeah. yeah. What I well, that's what I never mean. had a never had a big afro. Like it's that. not it's not as big as what Luffy had, but he had an afro. No. Well, yeah. Got, I mean, who who is responsible for bringing the afro to Japan? I guess is the question. Like, uh, in uh, mm. culturally, at least. Mm. Well, that's what I'm saying. It's because it's a boxer. I think like that's. That at the time that oh. was probably like the best conduit to, and uh, it's a for... boxing match that he's actually yeah. he's dressed like a boxer in right. that specific right. Um, That's why I think I thought, but I thought the afro was always kind of like this separate thing, just like the power of the afro is just being a completely separate um, well, story anything, idea. But it, maybe I'm, it, yeah. it reminds me more of like just general black exploitation 
of like kind of right. cool soul brothers just like yeah that brother can yeah. get it done yeah that kind yeah. of shit. And then, the guy from uh, from the mushroom episode of Cowboy Bebop. Yep, mushroom right. samba. And the big yeah, mm-hmm. um, it, it, it isn't doesn't Usopp even do that kind of at least in the dub? I think the dub have does, Usopp yeah. doing that. Yeah, um, so, I, Usopp, Usopp should have totally been a proper Don King. I know yeah. this person had <laughs> he should have. Oh wow, he should have had all the rings on. Um, <laughs> there, I know this guy had like five questions, but I forgot. Yeah. The person with the best style in One Piece is Sanji. I mean, except for when he just wears a tie and it, with a t-shirt. That, that doesn't work. I'm sorry, Sanji. He's been kind of going off the rails recently is what I'm trying to say. He's um, trying new things. He is trying new things and they're weird. Um, I'm not going to say There's they're a, bad, but they're he weird. He just had an unfortunate breakup, you know. That's uh-huh. true. That's true. There's a um, there's a Simpsons question. I oh yeah, do we yeah. still watch the Simpsons? Right? No, I do not. No, no. I have a lot of friends who do, uh, oh. but I have not. I'm guessing Ed doesn't. No. Um, what's our favorite episode? That's the other part of that question. Of the mm-hmm. Simpsons, yeah. Uh, the God, Simpsons? I haven't watched. Even when it was, even when I watched the Simpsons, I would watch it three times a day in reruns, and it was always yeah. the first ten seasons. Uh, yeah, uh, my favorite episodes are like um, Cape Fear, Sideshow Bob Roberts, Last mm. Exit to Springfield, Mars vs. Monorail. Those are all good episodes. Me, yeah, Mar- those, those are all great. Yeah, Mars vs. Uh, Monorail might be one of the greatest episodes of the show. Yeah. What's I the like one Homer... that like every everybody talks about the the way we was like the flashback episode? Yep. There's a bunch uh, of those. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Homer, I, I have a Homer... favorite part of a of a of an episode. Not really like. My fa- I don't think it's one of my favorite episodes, but the uh, the one where Martin gets pantsed and he ends up singing the Summer Wind. Oh yeah, <laughs> as the credit go the credits. No, that's that's part of darkness. That's part of darkness. And Bart yeah. breaks his leg. Right, that one I love that. Yeah, that was uh, the um, the mill pool. He's signing the cat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, another great that's episode. A good one. That's is a good when, one. Uh, Bill House and uh, Bart get the radioactive man number one comic. That's uh, a good right. one. Uh, Homer versus the Eighteenth Amendment is probably my favorite. Uh, the, the Rex, Rex Banner. Banner. I yeah. love the hell. I that is such a Schwartzwelder episode. <laughs> um, I love it. It's a good one. Yeah. Um, 20, what 23 else? short films. That's a good one. That's oh, a great yeah, that one. was great. Yeah, how okay. So many. That's like that's like the big Lebowski of Simpsons episodes because there's oh, so yeah. much stuff in it and it's so quotable. Totally. <laughs> Except it's also the Pulp Fiction of. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> is Quentin Tarantino in that episode or not? <laughs> no. Should, uh, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. All right. What's next? Uh, Mr. Page says, uh, I have a curious thought I'd like to share in regards to Dofi and the Reverie. Wouldn't he have had to attend it during the 10 years he was king of Dressrosa? Or would it be like Fishman Island and he simply declined going? I'm just imagining him there with all the kings and <laughs> stirring them up for laughs. Thoughts? That's a good question. Do the, yeah. Do um, the kings have to go? Can they decline going? Yes, I assume. Also, we know not mm-hmm. all the kings are invited in all of the years. Like, you True. can still be a member of the world government, but not necessarily get an invitation to the but, delivery. But with well, the fishmen, it was specifically just, you know, species. That was, yeah, races. that was, yeah. I don't, I see, I think Duffy would have been able to get out with technicality because their family was the celestial dragon family so they were the ones who supposedly yeah. left the kingdom behind and went you know to live in mary joa so they would probably just be like oh you you don't have to do it whatever you know it's whatever yeah, you want you wouldn't be allowed up there anyway because mm. oh they, yes yeah because actively homing would like you can never return and right. your children but also he is a warlord so i think the fact that he's a pirate might keep him out of that more than right. anything Give me a headache. <laughs> oh it's complicated. Um, all right, John Garja says, "Is Caesar a homestuck?" Well, yes, he's got horns, and his face is pale. His face, yeah. So that's he's got like purplish dark hair. Yes, he's right. a homestuck. Yeah, you know more right. about that than I do. Yep. <laughs> Just yeah. weird because we're the younger. Things. We're the younger ones here. I, I feel like Jill would definitely be able to back us up with that. Yeah, oh, no. yeah. And Steve and I are the old guys. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, kids, catch up. 
I, in a couple days, I'm just gonna see a, I'm gonna ask a, a tweet Twitter, from Jill. Yeah, I was gonna. Oh, right now? Yeah, that's a good idea. So there, therefore, it won't be in the middle of her listening. Um, what's next? <laughs> we'll get that answer soon, I assume. Okay. Uh, next is from Black Northwind. Who? So we did talk about this. Uh, the number sixty-five on the Scorpion Smile user on his jacket. Uh, my idea is that since Oda usually uses number fifty-six on Luffy, since it means Gomu in Japanese. But since Luffy can't use his power right now, that means his usual number is reversed. But that's just the crazy thought that came to my head. So I guess just like a, you know, inverse of, of Luffy or something that he's because he's a prisoner and he can't make use of his full powers that it's like a symbolic thing. I thought it might have been like the <clears throat> the opposite of like rubber or gum or whatever it is. But I, I can't think of mm. anything related to scorpions that would... Uh... Unless yeah, Mugo, but, or does that work in Japanese, mm-hmm. what I just said? No. Yeah, the no. 65 was on the Scorpion Smile user, not yeah. Luffy, right? No, yeah. You're correct. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, then why, what does Luffy have to do with anything? Well, just because it's 56 is Luffy's, and this was 65, so they're in first. Mm. So trying to find mm. a connection. Uh, I got an the answer constant here, struggle. So oh, from Jill? from Jill? Yeah, his horns aren't the right color, but maybe a trickster homestead, so... Yeah, I mean, he, he's Whatever Caesar. Wow. I don't know what that means either, but Caesar's a trickster everything. So, yes. Yeah. Sure. Uh, maybe maybe the 65 kind of re- like if you turn a five on its side and put the six above, it kind of looks like a scorpion. Mm. Like, I feel like he would have he would have done that. Yeah. Uh, if you if that was supposed to be the idea. Sure. I don't know. It's a, still a mystery, I guess. Uh, Niver says, if you were to take Sanji on a boys' night out for his birthday, what would you do? Mothers, lock up your daughters. Oh, geez. Oh, God. So we have none of the... Sanji doesn't have that much game. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) We have none of the Sanji people on this episode, so we're the perfect (sighs) people to answer this. (laughs) I have a question for Niver. Is is their name supposed to be a reference to the uh, Goof Custom in Mobile Suit 18? Please answer. Yes, please answer. <laughs> um, I would I would take him to a cold shower. <laughs> mm. Mm. Um, I'm trying. I, to... I would. I, don't know. I would encourage him to get his urges out elsewhere. I so I here's a question: Like, would it be would it even be worth taking Sanji out to dinner? Would he just be like, oh god, like who who cooked this? Uh, you know, for yeah. wherever you go. No, yeah, Sanji's like, definitely like, the person who's like, I'm going to cook for you. You'd have right. to go to, like, uh, La Borde, the what's it called? The this the French guy here. Um, like, a, like a top chef Michelin star restaurant. You'd have to go to, like, Jiro's uh, sushi place in Tokyo. And you'd be spending a ton for his birthday. So unless you have the means, I agree with Steven. It's not going to be worth it. Yeah. Unless right. you're any of the people who are not on this show, who are chomping at the bit to answer mm-hmm. this question, but who can't because they're not here. <laughs> Hi, Steve. What's next? <laughs> Duck Salsa says, what piece of One Piece music from the anime do you have the best memories of? This could be either openings or endings or even uh, OST from specific scenes. For me, it's definitely either ending one memories, ending eight shining ray or opening three or five. That they have a, that person has great taste. Yeah, that person does have great taste. Mm-hmm. I love Shining Ray. Now that mm-hmm. especially they mentioned it, we used to play that on our road trips. Ed, I'm sure you remember. Oh yeah, uh, all the time. Um, we used to play all of them all the time. But that one, I have good memories of. Um, I still have a, I have a playlist. I have all the ending themes. Yeah, the endings are mostly great, which makes it an extra big shame that they disappeared so long ago. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the the post time skip songs haven't been uh, as good. No. Yeah, on the whole, generally not. We go is a great song. I love we go. Yeah, they Um, started strong and then yeah, kind (laughs) of yeah, and then uh, shining, running, screaming, uh, whatever it is. I like that one more than you guys give it credit for. I hate that one. And <laughs> like, I go back, I'm like, maybe this song wasn't as bad as I thought it was. And then is that I hard come knock out days more or is angry. That, um, no, that was that's before no, that's hot, hard knock, I think. Screaming, running forever. <laughs> it's the name of the song, isn't it? 
I like stand up, uh, but stand up's okay. Yeah, it's fun to listen to. I I, uh, I agree with Alex who said it's kind of more of an ending theme, um, but it's not a bad ending theme. If it were an ending theme, I think it would be a good ending theme. Um, yeah, and the visuals are pretty good. Would be better as ending. Yeah, I like the visuals of that opening a lot too. Um, we did a ranking way back when, and I'm sure we'll do another one at some point in the future. Um, what's mm. next? No, I got, I got, ooh, 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 teacher, teacher. I got, I got music. I want to say <laughs> the, uh, yeah, I mean, not uh, soundtracks. So there is the song that plays usually at the end of an episode, but the first time I remember it really striking me is when uh, Kura, way back when. Is talking about the the life he had to live with Akaya and how he's just pretending to be a good guy, and they can finally throw it all away. It's a fucking epic song, and I can't think of what it's called. Uh, another great song you hear it all the time. It's called Three Towers. It's from the fifth One Piece movie. Uh, they played a lot during In the Slavi. Uh, yeah, fifth, the fifth movie. I know they they played the fifth and the seventh movie a lot in Any Slavi, if I remember. Yeah. That. Those are really good soundtracks. And six yeah. too, specifically during a uh, Davy Six Backfight they played in Water Seven. Yeah, Water Seven and I have a, like I love the six movie soundtrack, not just because I love the six movie, but mm-hmm. because it, not only did it play during like one of the best movies, but it played during my favorite arcs, uh Water Seven in particular. Um so that music I, I have very fond memories of. Um yeah. over and- overtaken, obviously. Oh yeah, obvious. That's I don't know any of the names of the of the PGMs. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard to remember. I wish I could remember my favorite because it's the Kuro song. I always just call it like, um, oh god, something heart. Uh, God, I'm not gonna remember right now. But another great one is Captain Captain Usopp songs, all of them, (laughs) including the ones from Dressrosa. The 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 famous Usopp is a really good one. We've used that on the show a lot. Yeah, and now that's the one Frankie stole, right? Uh no 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 that's uh Shik- I forget I forget the name it starts with an S H I K something okay uh, it's in it's in Japanese yeah. and, um, and and now one of my new favorite get pump m- music is uh Gear Four Luffy that one's great yeah I, I I mean the one thing the One Piece anime has consistently done super well is the music um oh and I want to just say the whole film gold soundtrack deserves a definite honorable mention there it's it's great unfortunately you will never hear it in the series because it's mm. uh, i think it's owned by sony so there's some... oh so you can't like they they can't cross simply because like sony produced the music for the movie yeah i think that's what it is i think it was, it was produced by it's completely different artists um all the music mm. in that movie is just so good um mm. yeah anyway we should we could talk about that all day and we will all right Let's go to another topic that we can talk about all day. True Evie says, now that Mr. Burns has taken a role as the new villain of My Hero Academia. Is that from this week? I didn't read this. Yeah, I think it's a new thing. I I saw Uh, Which Simpsons character would you like to see as the lurking legend in One Piece? And what would their crew be called? Keep up the good work. Oh, my God. So, So that's like the rocks or something? Yeah, I think that's what they're referring to. Uh, the mm. Rex Banner, <laughs> Ned Flanders, <laughs> the most uh, intimidating. Scorpio's band of merry employed merchants. Oh my God! Yes, <laughs> Hank Scorpio would be yep. the best no, One Piece the, character. The hammock pirates. Yeah. <laughs> some sugar uh, for you. Sorry, it's not in. Not in packets. It's, it's like everyone's packets. got a guaranteed four hundred one k. It would be amazing. Do you want some cream too? Um. <laughs> is that what Once, he said? Mm, that's cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, that's, I, I think it would be perfect. really funny if it was like um, uh, Jasper or something. Like he's just super, he's super old. He's talking about how he used to be a legend or something. Or Hans Molman. He, he yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Part, there you right. go. Yeah, it's probably even better. Hans Molman. Yeah. Krusty, obviously, buggy, that the only one could live. It wasn't Krusty, it was Little Pete, right? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, what was he called? I think oh, it was the, Little that Pete. creepy Krusty? The, the, yeah, the one, the that the one, the one with the accordion. The accordion, yeah. yeah. Is it, I thought it was, it was Little Pete or something like that. Something like that, yeah. Uh, um, uh, yeah is that it? That's it. 
Um, okay, so uh, let's go on to Ed. Peace the tweet. Oh, peace the tweet time. First one comes from Jordan Benj, who says, what do you think the exclusion of Jimbei in the movie trailer and the still color pages means? Something, nothing, everything? Um, also, love, love. he loves when we have Roger on, so we should have him on more. Um, I, I think it's just a reflection of that he hasn't come back in the manga yet. So they're not planning to have him in the movie. I don't know. Yeah. That's probably just as simple as that, which is unfortunate. Mm. Mm-hmm. Oh, hopefully he shows up in the manga soon. With Beige, at Wano. Wait, and Pez. We know that multiple days <laughs> have passed, so there's really no excuse for, for Jim Bay. Nope. Absolutely. A week, I think, has passed. So where the mm-hmm. hell is he? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, next Ed. one is from Operation Druid. who says, in the real Ghostbusters cartoon, Ghostbusters were sent to a cartoon world where they found the author being tortured by his creations. Yep. If Oda was sent to the One Piece, who would be torturing him and why? And who would rescue him? And if they did, would they release Oda or make him do some more monstrous things to the world of One Piece? Okay, um, I remember that. I remember that episode of Ghostbusters. It's a classic. Uh, <laughs> obviously, every villain he's ever created would torture the hell out of him. Uh, let's see. I mean, obviously, Luffy would would rescue. Yes, yeah. that's, that's what Luffy does. But like, um, Do Flamingo, Do Flamingo, but, but literally, but yeah, who, by the strings there. But who would rescue Nami from Oda? Oh my Ooh. god! Sanji, of course. Hopefully, everyone. <laughs> he wishes. No, Sanji would. I. I feel like Sanji would be bad. Uh, what do you call it? Sanji Absolutely. is like the devil on Oda's shoulder in that situation. I feel like. You know, it'd be really funny. It'd be like a <laughs> buggy would probably give Oda the most hell because it would be like a like duck a muck where. Buggy's aware that he's made the joke of all the jokes and would get on his case about that. <laughs> the butt yeah. of every joke. Yeah, the butt of every joke. Yeah, no, I yeah. know what you mean. Um, and right. also, he'll be angry about why he drew his nose like that. Um, Dude, what? There's nothing wrong with his nose. <laughs> oh, that's. I'm sorry. I didn't say anything. What? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, last one comes from CEO253, who says, if the German comic is based on real-life events or actions... I think number three is Stealth Black because Sanji wasn't there. These people saw it was zero, one, two, and four, and everyone assumed number three was invisible. I, I actually pretty totally good. concur with that, yeah. Because he's literally like the man in the iron mask, like just thrown in the cell and forgotten about. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Like that was Interesting, it. Yeah. That was the last oh. um, Okay, so that's going to do it. Um, why don't we round off, and uh, instead of trivia, I'll have a little bit of an announcement. Here we go. This has been the One Piece Podcast, episode 559 for March 3rd, 2019. Great episode, you guys. Uh, Thank you for helping me survive this potential blizzard snowstorm we're going through here on the East Coast. I heard the New York Public Schools are closed. Yeah, but I feel like they've been closing those a lot more recently. Um, Anyway. Cowardly school system, unlike in Chicago. Yeah, well, unless it's negative 45 degrees. uh, Well, there's, yes. What's perfect about that is I think it's the same in Celsius and Fahrenheit. Anyway, that's it for our weather corner uh, segment of the One Piece (laughs) podcast. Uh, So we have a little bit of an announcement. And that I I had mentioned on Twitter, we have a lot of great guests coming in March all month long. So I want to announce our next guest for next week. We will have Sungwon on. Uh, You might know him as ProZD on Twitter. Um, You can follow him at ProZDKP. Um... And assuming nothing, you know, happens in the intervening time, he should be on next week's episode to both talk about his One Piece history and also talk a little bit um, about the latest manga chapter. So we'll be on for the recap as well. Uh, so that's really exciting. Um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of uh, his Quenchy Roll show and uh, what he's been doing. Um, so yeah. looking forward to that. Um, Anime Crimes Division, I believe. Anime yes. Crimes Division. Uh, it's, it's a great show. Uh, if you have not checked that out. And there's a lot of homages to One Piece in it. Um, anyway, Stephen, where can people find you? 
Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Translatosaurus. Uh, Brian? Uh, you can find me on Twitter as Dark King Zorro, all one word. Uh, check out Animation Success Stories podcast where we interview uh, people working in animation. Find out how they got in and any is- inspirations they have. And Bannendorf. I had a thing on DeviantArt. DeviantArt. I haven't done that in a while. Yeah. A long while. I need to get back on that. My Did you see the Jinpei the one? It's my. I'm going to, but he needs to be official. Official. Ah, uh, okay. I yeah. see what you're he, doing. It's it's in <laughs> it's in the works. It's been in the works for seven years, <laughs> as Jimbe has. Yeah. Um, Edward, could the good people out there contact us? I'm uh, Edward E. One Piece on I was Twitter. Say, here's that con- underscore Seth. Logan. Yeah. Uh, I'm also at Weeb Trailers. I posted the trailer for the 1993 Battle Angel OVA. Uh, a couple days ago. A lot of people seem to like that one. Mm-hmm. Um, podcast can be found at onepiecepodcast.com and twitter.com, youtube.com, and facebook.com slash onepiecepodcast. Onepiecepodcast at gmail.com is our email address. One Piece Podcast, all one word. That's our Skype name. r slash onepiecepodcast. That's our subreddit. You can leave us some peace together there. Please support us. Patreon.com slash onepiecepodcast. Uh, you can subscribe on SoundCloud, subscribe on Google Play, subscribe, rate, and review on Apple Podcasts, or call us on our phone number. Zach? And that phone number is 347-497-MAJI. That phone number again is 347-497-6254. Call anytime. Anytime. With your questions, comments, theories, or uh, your health plan or hammock uh, recommendations. Health um, plan. <laughs> Fong one. Uh, <laughs> thank you all for coming on this week. Next week, we will be back with our manga recap, and Sung Wan will be on as well, plus... An anime recap as we head out of Whole Cake Island. That's exciting. Um, And a lot more, all that next week. We'll see you then. My name is Zach. My name is Ed. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Ciao.